You could have watched this video a day early. Check out my Patreon for more details. So you want to start using Linux. Only problem is, there's a lot of confusion for beginners trying to get into it. There are so many different versions of Linux out there, and there's a lot of, at first, confusing terminology. Like, what is a distro? What's a DE? You know, things like that. And in this video, we're going to demystify just a little bit of that. Just, just a little bit. If you're only going to watch the first 30 seconds of this video, just go with Ubuntu or Linux Mint. They're my personal picks on beginner-friendly distros. If you just want my recommendation and you don't care about anything else I have to say, you can feel free to stop watching. And for everybody else, let's keep going. First and foremost, let's just define distro real quick. Distro is short for distribution. It's basically just a shorthand word for saying version of Linux. So if you see Ubuntu or Linux Mint or Elementary OS or Pop OS or whatever, uh, those are all distros. It's still all Linux, but just a different version of it. And when you're deciding what distro you want to go with, there are two big rules you gotta consider. The first rule is to go with something popular. The reason why you'd wanna go with something popular is because the more eyes you have on your distro, the more secure it ends up being, because more people are gonna be working on it and maintaining that distro. And uh, I don't know about you, but I don't exactly trust in the security of Among OS and Hannah Montana Linux. You know, like, they're funny memes and everything, but I'm not going to use them on my main machine. <laughs> but for something like Ubuntu or Pop OS, yeah, absolutely, those things will be maintained just fine. The second big rule you have to keep in mind is... It doesn't matter. A distro is not a wedding ring. You don't have to commit to anything. You're free to switch distributions, change things up, change up your desktop environments, a whole bunch of stuff. And speaking of, what exactly is a desktop environment? A DE, aka a desktop environment, is essentially the GUI of your Linux distribution. And just like a distro, there's plenty of different DEs out there, and again, you don't have to commit to anything. I'm technically running the Pop OS distro, but I really didn't like their DE, so I decided to just install KDE Plasma on top of it. And like I said, it just doesn't matter. You know, there's plenty of different ways to run Linux and tons of different flavors of every possible thing you can think of. And I know that that can seem a bit overwhelming, but I'm here to ease those concerns a little bit. Because even though there are hundreds, if not thousands of distros out there, you really only need to care about like, I don't know, five, depending on how deep you want to go in this. Some of the more popular distros out there are things like Debian, Ubuntu, Mint, Pop OS, Elementary OS, and if you want to go even further than that, there are the Arch-based distributions like Base Arch, Manjaro, and Steam OS. Pretty much everything that I just listed here is a good beginner-friendly distro, but I would avoid the Arch-based distributions. You're totally allowed to go Arch if you want to. I'm not going to stop you, no one's going to stop you, but just Keep in mind that you do need to work harder to maintain an Arch-based distribution. And I'll get into exactly why that is here in a second. And the reason why I'm specifically talking about Arch Linux is because that's what SteamOS is based on. So you're going to have a bunch of new Linux users coming in and seeing SteamOS and thinking like, oh, well, that's pretty cool, I might want to use that, but then see that it's based on Arch and not entirely understand what that means. So again, we're gonna be demystifying a little bit of that knowledge and jargon. The main difference between something like a Debian-based distribution like Ubuntu or Mint and Arch is that Arch is a rolling release. Think of Linux distributions like a family tree where you've got one main progenitor of all of the big distros and that kind of bleeds in and they fork off to make their own different versions of whatever distro they decide to pick. So let's take Debian. Debian, f for the scope of this video, came first. And then Ubuntu skewed off of Debian to make its own distribution. And then a bunch of other people decided to take Ubuntu and skew that off into their own distributions like Mint or Pop OS. So you can see like the visuals of like, Linux distributions can fork off and do completely separate things, and those forks can then also fork off. It's one of the main reasons why this stuff is so incomprehensible to people who aren't aware of all this stuff. And there's a, so many of these little forks and little differences in all these different distributions out there. But again, you, you just really don't need to care about all this stuff. 
I already gave you my recommendation. Go with either of these two and you'll be just fine. Okay, so a similar thing happened with Arch. There was base Arch, and then Manjaro decided to fork off and become its own distribution. Steam OS is based on that initial base Arch, but it's kind of not Arch. It that kind of a conversation is completely out of the scope of this video, but just know that SteamOS is based on Arch as well as Manjaro. To put it very simply and in extreme layman's terms, Ubuntu slash Debian is for stability, while Arch-based distributions are for experimentation. You can customize quite a bit on Arch-based distributions, and you can do a lot of tinkering, but you need to put in a lot more work to properly maintain an Arch-based system. And it's something that not a lot of you are going to want to do, especially if it's your first time. This is the third time I'm saying this. These two, these two distros are going to be linked in the description. Just go with them. <laughs> I'm, I'm really trying to hammer it home that it's just like, I know there's a lot. I understand there's a lot. I understand that it's daunting to people who don't know. So just funnel it into these two. And you've also got a couple other picks right here that you can look at and see like, oh, well, maybe I would like to go with this one, or maybe I can throw this on a second machine that I happen to have. In conclusion, uh, yes, I know there was a lot of information in this video, especially given the length of it. But the point is, is that Linux is only as deep as you want it to be. You can go down the arch rabbit hole and eventually lead yourself to Gentoo or, or Gentoo, or however you pronounce that, it doesn't matter. And you can build Linux from scratch and you can do all of that high level computer tech shit, but you don't have to. You can just install Ubuntu and have a normal computer. Because Linux is meant to be customizable and flexible. Linux is not a set in stone experience. And it really is a lot like Lego, which is why I've got these little guys sitting right here in the background. You can just buy a Lego set, in this case a Bionicle, and just follow the directions, and you get all the specific pieces for whatever you're going to do for whatever set you just bought, and still get a very pleasant experience of building the Lego, having fun, and still ending up having a toy for you to play with after it's all done. Or you can be what I was as a kid, and you can just get a bunch of parts in a box and make something completely original. And you can take all the parts and little bits and pieces of Linux and forge it together into your own specific experience that you have. And your custom build might be entirely different to someone else's custom build. You know, there's no end to how customizable Linux is. And that is so cool to me. Like I said in this video, I changed my desktop environment on Pop! OS, and that was just really fucking awesome, right? I didn't like how this one particular bit of Linux worked, so I just changed it. It definitely took some work, and if you want to change up your system in any meaningful way, yeah, it's going to take some work, and it does take a little bit more work to handle a Linux distribution than it does a Windows install. But that additional work you put in, you get back this just insanely unique experience that you can't get anywhere else. And I guess that's just the main point of this video. So enjoy your Linux-based system, enjoy whatever distro you decide to go with, and if you have any other questions like uh, terminal commands or, or package managers or things like that, uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below. I'd be more than happy to answer any questions y'all would have. And feel free to reach out to the Linux community. I know that some of them can be a little bit touchy, but I swear to you, the majority of Linux users are really chill and are more than happy to help you out and answer whatever questions you happen to have. And if I get enough questions uh, revolving around a particular topic, then I'll just go ahead and make another one of these videos talking about oh, like Linux basics. I enjoy talking about this stuff, and I hope that these videos answer some questions you might have. Because Linux, while it is daunting, it really isn't that difficult. It's only as difficult as you want it to be.